Hi, I'm Arthur Levin, and I'm going to be giving a presentation on um, some various data we've collected about people's perception of novel agents. So what we were trying to do, just in general, our mission going into this, is we want to probe the general population's feelings on novel agents, you know, AI, bi biological creatures that are being developed by people in a lab, and etc. Anything that sort of falls out of what we would typically assume as like natural agents in the world. And we're, and we're also trying to determine the level to which people are aware of and prepared for these agents, because pretty soon we're going to be dealing with them in all sorts of different ways, and in like the setting of a, a jury room, we're going to, pretty soon people are going to be having to think about, well, okay, how do I feel about these new creatures, can we try them, that sort of thing. And so we wanted to see to what level people were prepared for these sorts of hard decisions that are going to be coming up. And we also just, in general, wanted to look at the correlations between various opinions on a lot of difficult topics and see if there was any uh, interesting relationships we could notice. So for the project itself, uh, we read a book called Picturing the Mind, uh, which was very helpful and gave us a lot of uh, ideas about the whole thing. Uh, and I did in-person uh, lessons with lessons with Dr. Michael Levin at uh, Tufts University. So to make the survey, we planned what topics we wanted to talk about, and we polished the text to make sure we were, you know, clearly uh, stating everything we want to do. Uh, we created the survey um, in a special program that I'm going to get to in a little bit, the design for surveys. Uh, and we tested on just a few subjects to see what their general opinions were, and they had some feedback, and we implemented that. Uh, and then we deployed it via MTurk, uh, which we'll get to the specifics of what that is and how it works pretty soon, coming up in the slides, but that's where we deployed it. And then we noticed there were a few errors that we had uh, left in that, while not super problematic, could be improved upon, that were exposed uh, once we gave it you know, to the general public, so we worked on those. And then we were able to analyze the data and see uh, what we were looking for, really. And we created this presentation so that we could uh, share what we learned from that. So the tool we use to build the survey uh, is called Qualtrics, and uh, it's just a handy to start tool for making surveys. Uh, it's pretty quick, and any sort of anything really that you want to do in terms of making a survey, it just handles that pretty simply uh, compared to anything else we found that we'll say we were able to access. Then, once the survey was created, we obviously needed to get it out to people, and we wanted to have as large of a possible um, group of people as possible. So we used uh, Amazon's MTurk, which is basically a tool for distributing surveys to uh, large numbers of people and paying them to take it. Uh, in the end, we got 365 responders, uh, and according to Qualtrics criteria, the data quality was 98%. That's pretty good, that's almost 100%. So just for some examples of the kinds of questions we were asking on the survey, because we, you know, we obviously can't include every one, we're gonna talk about the most interesting ones, but here's the sort of things we were looking for. Uh, demographic data that we could compare to people's opinions, so stuff like their age, what level of education they have, that sort of thing. Their general opinions, so like preconceived notions on stuff that people probably have thought about at least somewhat and have some sort of idea of where they land, and answers to very specific situations. So if we present you with a very specific, pretty nuanced problem, how well will these people be able to come up with uh, a new idea that they hadn't really thought about before to something that uh, they were approaching for the first time, was sort of a difficult subject. And now we can get into what we found. We're gonna be looking at some of the different relationships and how you know, this question, that question, related to each other. Relationship one that we thought was interesting was between people's age and whether or not they thought that we should be developing novel life forms. Uh, and as you can see from the data, what we found, and uh, according to the chi-squared test, this data is significant, this relationship, most people age 20 to 60 are undecided, whereas pe people between 61 and 70 largely said yes, with no one being undecided. So in general, people are pretty mixed. Um, they're not really sure where they land one way or the other, generally as you go through most of the ages. But actually, people uh, on the older side are very, it's much more decisive, and they're generally in favor of yes. 
which I think would go a lot against what a lot of people might assume. Relationship two, we're looking at age again, uh, but this is about the concept of self. So the question was, think of yourself, the collection of your thoughts, emotions, perceptions. What kind of thing, if it's a thing at all, is yourself? And then we gave them three options to pick from, from what they believe the self to be, a uh, permanent object or structure, a uh, dynamical feature, or an illusion. In general, uh, most people, almost regardless of age, believe the self to be a permanent object or a dynamical feature, with slight preference towards a separate option. So really, age didn't come into this one a lot, uh, and almost no one believed it to be an illusion. Now, um, the, according to the chi-squared test, this relationship is not super significant. So while we can't really um, expand this to uh, sort of universally, it is still interesting to see what these specific people's thoughts were and, you know, comparing it to other data points that we have. Relationship three was about sort of people's background in education and interest, really, uh, against whether or not they think we should be developing these life forms. So we at, so we're comparing whether they had a computer science background with their thoughts on the de development of new life forms. And people in the computer science field are slightly more in favor of developing novel life forms. It's still pretty 50-50. Uh, a lot of people lean towards maybe, but overall there were more yeses than there were noes, even though maybe was the uh, most dominant category. And the chi-squared test has confirmed yet that yes, this, this, this data is significant. Uh, this one, very similar again with the same novel life forms question, but this time it's philosophy background instead of uh, computer science, and this in this relationship still is significant. So, people in the in the philosophy field are actually twice as more likely to think that we should, in fact, be developing these new creatures. So, computer science people sort of on the fence, slightly lean towards, slightly lean towards yes, but it's really mixed. With the philosophy people, it's just really a lot more in favor. For relationship five. Uh, we wanted to test whether people's interactions with the types of AI we, ha we have right now with ChatGPT or even older stuff like Akinator or Cleverbot, whether or not that had uh, any impact on their thoughts on humanity, uh, AI and its relationship to humanity, and whether or not they thought AI would take over humanity. And so people who have interacted with AI are more likely to believe that AI will one day take over humanity. The people who have had experience with these things who've, you know, interacted with them in some way, are really more certain that um, humanity is going to be taken over. In, if, they, if people haven't, they're saying, okay, maybe, I have, you know, nothing to base this on, but uh, with the people who have, it's definitely much more significantly in the yes portion. And as you can see the, with the chi-squared chi test, this is a significant relationship. This one, we want to get a little bit more specific. So we want to know how do people's views on the self affect their answers to this question. Here's the question we presented with. You are visited by a genie who offers you a chance at a really pleasant experience that you would normally enjoy. You have two options. A, you have the experience right now, but absolutely no memory of it afterward. Or you'll have a perfect memory of doing it, but it's a false memory and you never actually get to. And so we want to see what people's answer to the self question, you know, dynamical feature, permanent object, illusion, how that would affect their thoughts on memory versus experience. Here's the data we got. And uh, as you can see, uh, experience just blew everything out of the water here. Regardless of people's views on the self, they overwhelmingly want the experience without the memory. Uh, it's just not even close, as you can see from that uh, diagram there. Relationship seven. Again, with the genie question, but this time we were comparing that to do they believe the immaterial soul or mind is as distinct from the brain? So if you sort of think of your soul or your mind as being apart from, you know, the, the brain, just, you know, some, uh, fl some uh, flesh inside your head, well, is, if there's a difference, how does that affect whether you want an experience or memory? And uh, again, regardless on their view of the immaterial mind, most people prefer the experience with no memory. Uh, but, proportionally, the more uncertain ones are the minority who prefer the experience without the memory.
In relationship eight, we want to see whether people's uh, belief in a higher power, so you know, a supernatural being or a god, uh, their belief in that, how does that affect whether or not they think we should be developing novel life forms? And actually, I think this is really part of why we want to see this. This is an interesting case where the results go pretty significantly against what you might expect. People who believe in a supernatural being generally also agree that we should be developing new life forms. I think there's a lot of, an image that a lot of people have uh, that those sort of ideals are incompatible and that someone who believes in a higher power wouldn't want us to be, you know, uh, as some people say, playing God. But actually that's not the case in the data we found. And the, as you can see, the chi-squared test, this is again a significant relationship. This one, uh, again with the higher power question, but we're, con we're uh, comparing it to seeing whether people would think AI is taking over humanity. And people who believe in the supernatural being are also likely to believe that AI will take over humanity. It's 67% who are saying both, yes to both. That's a pretty significant uh, amount of people. It's sort of, again, it might go against what you might believe of sort of a divine plan or something that maybe that includes being taken over by AI. Here, we have a little bit of a twist. These questions, we did something interesting. So we have, we have two paragraphs that were written by ChatGPT. We know we can prompt ChatGPT, but how good is ChatGPT at prompting us? So for one section of the survey, we automatically, and randomly of course, split the participants into groups to answer several questions based on introductory paragraph meant to push them towards a specific answer. However, as I just mentioned, half the prompts were written by AI and half the prompts were written by a human. We did this to see which was better at prompting the participants towards the different answers. Here are the results. So here you can see neither the human nor the AI's prompts could change people's minds on the question. Regardless of what the push was, whatever paragraph they saw, they almost exclusively wanted the experience now, regardless of what anyone else was trying to say to them beforehand. So regardless of the author, the prompt was unable to push people's opinion in either direction. No matter what argument they were presented with, 82 to 89 percent of participants chose to have the experience without the memory. So that's you know, most of the data that we were uh, that we had and all the interesting relations we could find. There were obviously some limitations. Uh, the sample size was somewhat limited. Uh, as I mentioned, it was you know a little bit over 300, 350 people. Uh, so obviously better would be better because we could have bigger would be better because we would have a more diverse group of people. We could get more opinions and therefore the answers we would get would be you know more representative of the global population. Uh, and since we used MTurk, the way MTurk works is there has to be a payment. Uh, the payment for taking this survey was one dollar, and so that introduces you know possible unknown incentives. So in conclusion, why are these findings important? What can we learn from them? Well, I think you know going forward in time, a lot of these questions are not just going to be you know hypothetical stuff you deal with in a survey. It's going to be stuff that we're dealing with in the real world, when you know. AI start, if AI starts becoming more self-aware, you know, we realize that uh, aliens exist or something. Any of these, anything that isn't within the realm of intelligence that we're aware of currently is going to be start raising some really difficult questions because all of our society basically is sort of presumed on the ideas of, okay, we can, we can determine what is intelligent and what isn't. These are all the things we're aware of and we've built this system around them. And I think it's going to be a nasty surprise once we start having to widen our um, standards and try to figure out all these, you know, edge cases where it's sort of gray where stuff fits in. And the earlier we start thinking about this, the better we're going to be prepared. So, you know, what you can do now. So you can actually take the survey right now. Uh, if you just scan that QR code, you can get open the survey up for yourself and answer all the questions. Um, you can study this fascinating topic, you know, of diverse intelligence. There's lots of great material out there uh, that you can learn from and uh, go beyond just what we've talked about here. And, you know, if you make your own survey and deploy it, just 
gathering more stuff for your even if even if it's just you who looks at it just the more informed we all are as a society about these sort of things the the better everything's going to go in future uh here are some acknowledgments uh we had just a great amount of help from dustin Erdosh. uh mike 11 was really uh a key member of this, we couldn't have done it without him. And the funding, which we used to pay the people on MTurk, uh, we got from the Diverse Intelligence Summer Institute. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free.